Good evening, dear listeners, and welcome to the Dreaming Prophet. Now, life has thrown us all off schedule lately, and I'm sure it's been about the same for our listeners. But no matter how precarious things are or how stressful they may feel, remember, we can do this in the hectic start of 2020 will pass as well. So stay safe, stay sound, and most of all, enjoy the episode tonight. My name is Lavanya. I'm Astro. And I'm Xavier. This is a Blackout Club show for Blackout Club players with minimal speculation, all lore, and a focus on the known facts. Our topic of the day is a plot roundup to Electric Boogaloo. As a friendly reminder, as always, The Dreaming Prophet is not spoiler-free. We will spoil literally everything in this latest plot roundup. In terms of content warning, it's just the usual warning of character death. Welcome to the clown car that is Red Acre. Tonight, we are all cosplaying it. Where we last left off, we had met the Unknown Caller, also called UC. We know that they were a Dance for Us host, and we know that they're an adult. Unknown Caller gave out more recordings to players, then went quiet for a while. When they reappeared, they were messaging players through a dead man's switch. Through this, they delivered the last of the recordings of the night that Colin was taken. They also mentioned that they tried to call for help, specifically saying, quote, I tried to call the cavalry, end quote. Tragically, it turned out Red Acre's cell phone signal just wasn't strong enough to get there. Now, this implies that the Unknown Caller wasn't the glorious Hikamori that all of us had canon them as. Instead, they weren't working completely alone. They were actually connected and presumably spoke to some group of other people. We don't know what the group is, though, so the community has simply decided to call them the Cavalry. When the idea heard that Unknown Caller had gone missing and was potentially dead, he suggested that there might be some way to recover the Unknown Caller's phone to get the data stored on it. After the last of the Unknown Caller's recording were given out, players were texted by headquarters. HQ headquarters is club NPCs like Dax and Gwen. HQ asked what players believed happened based on the recordings and information they had so far. The very next day, Unknown Caller's full recording played on the TV in the boxcar. The audio was paired with an image of a skull smoking a classic pipe. The audio itself was every clip that we had been given in the proper order and with context. This audio is now labeled Sculptor Sleep Talk Translation in the journals, if you want to check it out. The night that the Unknown Caller's full recording was released, something else happened. A group of Dance for Us followers went out into Red Acre and met Dance for Us. She began to speak to them about bravery and fear, then invited them to come to the moon. When the players arrived on the moon, it was red, and the stars were placed with a black hole in a red sky. It was, unfortunately, a bit of an ambush by Hunt the Strong. He and Dance for Us argued, and then, unfortunately, Hunt the Strong consumed Dance for Us. He told Dance for Us's followers that they now belong to him and also told them that no other gods could hear them say Dance for Us's name anymore. As it turns out, no other gods could remember her clearly at all. The moonscape where Hunt the Strong and Dance for Us spoke isn't a real physical location. It is, for lack of a better word, a hallucination. When players go to the moon, they're actually blacking out. Likewise, when gods speak to the players, they aren't speaking out loud in a way that enemies on the map could hear through their ears. They're speaking to players inside their minds. When gods visit children for a brief time, the children host those gods. This, of course, prompted players to ask, how did Hunt the Strong manage to do this and kill Dance for Us? It had to do with the Dance Fever mission, which was one of the most recent missions at the time of her death. Noel said, Quote, no boys can explain this, so it's your lucky day. The hunter appeared to dance for us chosen at host as a slender dancing figure, taught them parts of his name and dreams. That music was just a convenient trigger to make them remember it after waking. Sleepers and lucids don't fully host dance for us, so they respond with a meaningless reflex now. The damage is done. Hosts and chosen either now belong to the hunter or he can contact them more easily, end quote. Who knew that the rabid coyote had a few tricks in him? 
which of course means that Hunt the Strong also took full possession of the Unknown Caller, overwhelming their personality and causing their style of typing to change. From well-articulated, if disgustingly fucking crass, commentary about sex dungeons, to endless repetition and a permanent finger on the caps lock button. Arguably more child-friendly, but at what cost? Legibility. And also, like, personhood. That's all. The knowledge that we gained from it, as far as I'm concerned, is definitely worth it. It isn't confirmed by canon, but we can all agree that Hunt the Strong Possessed Unknown Caller probably uses their phone on light mode only, and Hunt the Strong only knows how to type one finger at a time. After Die For You, the Measure Cuts was the next to join the pact. He initially expressed doubts over the Idare's trustworthiness and insulted him, calling him things like the Crown Prince Contrarian. However, unfortunately, as players continued to petition him, the Measure Cuts eventually began to see the frankly questionable advantages to joining with the Idare. He began asking players for their opinions, and when given, he formally announced his allegiance via the Godcast. He did so in encounters that involved him interacting directly with the Idare, using players as their go-betweens. In her teeth, meanwhile, is one of the few other independent voices left, and has chosen to stay away from the miasma of conflict, and to the members of the pact, she has gone entirely silent. Is she dead? Is she missing? Is she just ignoring their voicemails as they desperately blow up her phone? We don't know, but that's up to her followers to find out, so hit her up. I'm just saying, she's doing the ultimate power move. She's leaving them on red, letting them see that she's left them on red, but not replying. Go her! Now, the old tongue has been present in everything we've seen so far, and has been the creepy specter lurking behind the door for the entirety of the game. The old tongue was used to kill dance for us, and it is supposedly what the daemons are made out of. If you'd like to know more about that, you can check out episode 9, A Field Guide to Daemons. However, until now, we did not know it. We were old tongue illiterate, you might say. Many of the gods claimed they didn't know it either, but we found out later they just meant they weren't fluent in it. They know some pieces and phrases, but not all of it anymore. Unfortunately, they realized no matter how much they resented studying in the past, every single daemon in Red Acre was after the old tongue. So all at once, they each realized that the fate of Red Acre laid in the hands of whichever one had the best command of the language. And so the arms race began. Hey, you say all the gods, but I can confirm that Laugh Last hasn't said anything about wanting to learn the old tongue. He's leaving that for the nerds, like the measure cuts. Dance for Us had been studying the old tongue, so when Hunt the Strong consumed her, what she knew became his. Unfortunately, that's not enough for him. He wants more. With the cursed updates, phones and tablets begin appearing around town. They emit a loud shrieking noise as you get close to them, and they show pictures of handprints on a white staticky screen. It's kind of creepy. What's even creepier is what happens when you pick them up. When collected, they afflict the players with a curse. We know of five right now. The ones we do know are Paper Angels, The Call, Gorgon, Vampire, and No More Shadows. Speak as one calls the curses, quote, Worms of the Old Tongue, end quote, and tells us that Hunt the Strong is responsible for the curse tablets. Quote, those who served the lost ones, we believe the beasts corrupted them, told them to seek the old tongue. Wild now, they test on the innocent, end quote. After completing a mission with a curse, players receive two new gestures. These are parts of the old tongue which they can now equip and use at will. In her teeth describes the curses this way, quote, little bits of the old tongue. They are not alive as I am, but they have life. They are like pieces of... DNA, little bits that are striving to make themselves known in the universe, end quote. The idea also tells us that as we learn the old tongue, it learns of us. Just a little creepy, which, speaking about creepy, the exorcism mission was added to the game in the same update. This is a new mission type which asks players to collect masks called 
blackout image viewers. These look similar to the black masks the pajama sleepers wear, up to and including the same spooky green glow. After collecting them, players are asked to run on back to a box called the Exorcism Kit, where they can dispose of the mask. The challenge is they have to make this trip without getting caught by shadowy people who chase them the entire way. Don't worry, you're not having fun, but they definitely are. When placing the masks inside the kit, players are given brief flashes of figures akin to the figures we see in the cryptogram library projectors. The idea has specifically told us that the masks have been tampered with, quote, to test the old tongue, I believe. End quote. He didn't say who tampered with them, though, leaving that to our speculation. He also said, quote, the entire goal of the test seems to be about bypassing will, or to put it in another way, consent, end quote. He says he finds it horrific. Noel said, quote, exorcism helps the clubs by getting them closer to understanding more old tongue, and it helped the enemy already. According to most recent interactions, the hunter is suspected of having released the tablets into the community to study the effects on random innocents. Like Pandora's box, it cannot be closed, but individual spirits slash curses slash syllables can be caught and contained. Doing the mission now doesn't help the hunter or speak as one. The damage is done. It is clean up with the added benefit of personal research at risk to oneself, end quote. One last note before we move on. When talking about the exorcism kit in the study of Old Tongue, the idea said this. Quote, the Old Tongue, once mastered, could replace the song itself, could birth a new, unspeakable god that relies on no word nor song. It is that from which we sprang, end quote. Now back on the topic of gods, Santa Grudge showed little interest in the activities of the pact and the war at first, but was eventually won over when the idea pulled a surprising move and agreed to let her not only join the pact, but lead it. And out of game material, this is around the point that the EH team began to focus on visits over prayer responses. This has resulted in longer transcripts and a greater amount of direct interaction with the voices, but as Noel noted here in this quote, quote, not really here, but ducking in to say, the nuance of the measure cuts take on Seed the Grudge that there wasn't a ton of time for as we shifted to prioritize visit time over player responses was, he sees Seed the Grudge as a talking bomb. But because she can talk, she must be seated at the table. To silence her would be bias. He did not see her being given leadership, however. His chosen and student's reserve on that count reflects his position pretty accurately. End quote. Now, see the grudge might be a bomb, or as Beak as one put it, a wildly firing cannon. But once she joined the entire pack, did pick up a lot of momentum. It has begun to move forward more deliberately, and we're gaining more news of their movement over time. For instance, the measure cuts is able to stay in the in-between long term, much longer than any of the other gods. The Adair says that, to ensure the measure cuts isn't alone, the other pact gods will rotate in and out of the in-between to accompany him as he studies it, and the old tongue. And Die For You and Seed the Grudge began making rounds, asking players what the pack should focus on. Their questions were echoed by HQ, texting players during their missions. As it stands now, they seem to be deciding whether to focus on finding bells or fighting the hunter. While the measure cuts and Seed the Grudge were joining the pact, Things were still progressing with other players off in the background. The cavalry, as the community likes to put it, has begun contacting players through notes left in the boxcar as relayed by headquarters. As the pack began making plans, HQ also contacted two players specifically, saying that notes had been left in the boxcar for them. To a player who had been contacted frequently by the unknown caller, the anonymous messengers left this note as described by headquarters. Whoa, creepy note. Skull with a pipe? LOL clip art? Reads, RK, you didn't get them turned. Tried to save them. FWIW, thanks. Tradition is, we lose a tin hat or we replace them. You aren't even legal, so junior member, be in touch. Stay awake. To the player who had learned a lot about the dead skeptic, the mysterious woman behind the chat logs with Bells and Gwen that have been stored on the boxcar laptop, they left this note. 
They got him, but not her. She is stuck outside Slumberland for now. Until she gets back in. You never gave up on her, so we kind of see you as her low-rent body double. That might mean missions. You're welcome. We have no way of confirming that these two notes were sent by the same individual or organization. We only know they were distributed by HQ on the same night. We do know that whoever sent these notes, however, knows a whole lot about the club and the children within it. These children specifically were sent these notes. One even had the note addressed to their house. So, you know, unknown callers' habit of creeping around? Apparently, that's everyone in their little clique. Whoever the cavalry are, they have yet to follow up. Meanwhile, back in Voiceland, everybody's turning to the last few gods that have really hung back on joining up with anybody, including Dear Laugh Last. As one of the few holdouts, everybody was kind of interested in him. The pact made their little cues towards him. Even Speak as one kind of entertained the idea. But while he initially waffled on who he would ally with, stating that he was keen mostly just to survive this conflict, he eventually chose not Speak as one, not hunt the strong, not even a groveling on his knees, the idea, to remain independent and to see who will ultimately come out on top. Spoiler alert, it's gonna be Speak as one. Spoiler alert, Lavanya is bias. The unknown caller disappeared after flipping the dead man switch for a substantial amount of time, but returned later, possessed by Hunt the Strong, and with an unusual new typing style, as mentioned before. Players began to try to break Hunt the Strong's hold over them, with little initial success. Eventually, though, in March of 2020, that for you personally intervened. With a player's help, they intercepted unknown callers, spoke to them, and helped draw their personality to the forefront instead of Hunt the Strong. While the hold was not entirely broken, it appeared fractured. Unknown caller up to this point had always referred to Hunt the Strong in the third person, separately from themselves, using he and him. However, as the player began interrogating them, the unknown caller's answers became less certain until they were disrupted by key smashes. Hunt the Strong swiftly reasserted control. He began speaking in the first person, using I and my. He said, quote, So, little whelps, well played. Whatever poison this is, I am not done with this one yet. See you soon. End quote. We post breaking news every other week, a short but sweet summary of the latest and greatest in the Blackout Club interactions. Breaking News is a Twitter newsletter made by Lavanya. It's a quick read and a great way to catch up on lore. Find those on our off weeks, as in weeks we don't publish episodes, on Twitter at the Dreaming PC. We now have a website with links to all of our guides and resources on it. This includes the newbie guide, the Lorepedia, the Player Terms Lexicon, and more. You can find that at tinyurl.com slash the Dreaming Prophet. There's an official interaction archive on the Discord. This archives both God Talks and personal dreams. If you have transcripts or videos, please add them to the archive. There is also an option to allow your encounter to be used to support the wiki, which is heavily encouraged. Join the Discord to get involved at discord.gg slash the Blackout Club. The Blackout Club is made by Question Games. Our transcript and assets are by Lavanya. Audio editing and video is by me, Astro. If you can see Xavier, it's too late. <laughs>